Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I've often talked about how climate change is messing up the jet streams, and this is leading to increases in frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events. And also these weather events are happening now in places where they never used to happen before. Talking about mostly hydrological events like extreme uh, torrential rains leading to extreme flooding or um, droughts on the other side of the coin. In this video, I'm going to talk all about fire, wildfires, and how climate change is increasing the frequency, severity, and duration of wildfires. Just like extreme weather is increasing, it's also causing wildfires to occur in places where they didn't occur before. Um, I'm not finished this book, I'm a good chunk through. It's called Megafire. The Race to Extinguish a Deadly Epidemic of Flame by Michael Kodas. It just came out recently. It's a 2017 book. Um, the author is Deputy Director of the Center of, for Environmental Journalism at the University of Colorado Boulder. Now, this is a great book all about these, these enormous fires that we're seeing. We're in a different uh, climate regime change the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans, we're in a different wildfire regime. And this is not good because all wildfires, they, they're burning organic material, they're burning vegetation, and that carbon is going into the atmosphere, and those trees and vegetation are no longer there to suck carbon out of the atmosphere. So it's a double whammy as far as climate change is concerned. So let's, right get in, let's get right into these wildfires. If you just Google Google Images and search for wildfires, you can get all kinds of different images of these massive fires So, and firefighting. You know, the resources, there's some plots here um, of area burned um, as a function of year, or these are, this is a particular drought map here. Um, there's lots of reasons why climate change is making wildfires a lot worse, and I'll get into some of the details on this. So let's have a look at some of the different types of forest fires. Okay, we have surface fires. Travel fairly, not, not too fast, they travel along the surface. Uh, we have ground fires, if we have um, high organic material, in the soils, etc., or permafrost, those can actually burn, and these can be very long duration, slow burning fires. We also have crown fires where the fires spread just at the tops of the trees, and these can move very, very fast and be very difficult to fight. Uh, just bring up this guy here. Okay, so. In a forest where fires rarely happen, the fuel builds up, okay? So there's surface fuel, which is grass, logs, woody debris, brush, call it forest litter. There's ladder, ladder fuel, which are shrubs, small trees, snags, also branches um, on the tree. So ladder fuel here, and there's also the tree crowns, okay? So surface fires spread quickly through brush and woody debris. Ladder fuels allow the fire to move up towards the forest canopy, and then if the crown starts burning, the, then the fires are so intense, they're fanned by the, way, the, the uh, high winds, and they're difficult to control. Okay, so there's all kinds of uh, good information here. Depending on the intensity, fires can benefit or harm forests, etc. Okay, so there's lots of uh, information there. Um, if we look at the components of a forest, um, we have the understory, lower canopy, mid canopy, upper canopy. The mid canopy would be the ladder fuels, so the fire can spread from the ground up to the crown. Um, here we have uh, wind, we have wildlife, microbes, fungi, things like that, air, air movement here. And then, of course, we have a whole ecosystem in the ground. We have the roots, we have the soils, we have upper soils and deep soils, and then the geological substrate underneath, and there's nutrient cycling, there's water cycling, and the whole root system. Um, okay, so 
basically, let's have a look. This is a great site. If you just Google uh, Global Forest Watch, there's an organization, globalforestwatch.org. And this is what their website looks like. And this map here gives you an image, gives you the location of all these different fires that are going on around the planet. You can view the fire statistics for the last seven days in any country. You can enlarge and, and uh, decrease the map. You can click on uh, different, diff you, can, you can get information about different fires here. So here we go. The brightness of the fire, confidence, the latitude, longitude, acquisition data, acquisition time. Okay, you can get information on uh, particular fires. Okay, so there's different uh, brightness levels, or which is a measure of the intensity of the fire. Okay, um, let's have a look. If we want to look at the country report, we just generate the report. I did that for the U.S., for example. So here, here's the fire report for the U.S. It's over. It's from September 24th to October 1st, 2017. It tells you how many fire alerts there were. It tells you the states that they were in gives you the distribution of these, of the uh, fire alerts. Okay. Um, okay, if I go down the, the number of fire alerts by state, we've got California here. Okay, so we've got peak fires here, here, and uh, fewer fires. Uh, here you can follow look at the color-coded map. So here we go. We have Arkansas. We have 1256 fire alerts California is next Hawaii and so on Okay, you can also um, The greatest number of fire alerts by county Is uh, here Okay, so you can see um, different counties and uh, if we go to fire alert counts, uh, MODIS, this is a satellite MODIS. You can see the um, different alerts from, this is from January 2012 to August 2017. Big, a lot of bad stuff going on here. This is during the El Nino 2015 when it was super warm. Fires spiked up here. Daily fires, 1,014. Daily fires. Yep, there we go. 3,334. I missed this peak. Uh, I can't seem to get the peak. 2,995. I'm, I have to expand and get the peak. You can do that. Um, here is a plot. Um, January through uh, December. This is 2017 here. Okay, we've got the different years here. 2012. 2013, 2015, 16, 2017. Okay, not sure what happened to 2014. 2014. Okay, it's one of these ones, probably the lowest one. Okay, so the annual fire history, that's in terms of fire alerts, modus fire alerts, and so on. Okay, so that's a good site. Now, fires put out a lot of Particulates in the air, they put out carbon monoxide. So Google Earth Null School, bring up the Earth Null School screen, uh, Earth, Earth Null School screens, click on Earth, bring up the menu, go to chemistry. You can see we're looking at carbon monoxide, CO2 here, sulfur dioxide. These things are all produced generally in fires. You can look at the particulates. Um, this is uh, any particle, um, this is one micron cutoff, this is 10 micron and above, 2.5 micron diameter and above, one micron and above, and you can see where the sources are, but you have to be careful because of course heavy industry produces a lot of pollution that will be seen on here. But if you go, for example, to a place like, uh, you know, where there's not industry, Okay, so if there's fires, you know, right up here, for example, um, okay, so this is not much industry up there in the far north, so this is probably going to be, um, there's no SO4, 
but there's particulates there and there's CO there, there's, there's SO2 there. This is probably a, a fire up there. Okay, so this is another way is to look at air pollution. This is, uh, you can, this is air pollution in world, in the world, real time air quality index, AQI, so just Google air quality index. Then you see it around the world and you see some very high areas here and here, 906. This is the highest in China, very polluted air there. You can click on it and hazardous, 906. Don't step outside, don't breathe the air, you know, have a mask, you know, it'll shorten your life. But you can go to, you know, if there's a massive fire, you can, and there's an air monitoring index, and you can look at the, the pattern of the jet streams and the winds and go downstream and you can see the air quality. So those fires in BC recently, they sparked up and gave air, the, the air was so hot in the fire, it went up into the jet streams, up in, into the stratosphere even. It was carried across North America and it came down onto some Eastern states, you know, wrecking the air quality there. They had to get exemptions. It wasn't local air. air. Now this is uh, fire statistics, CTIF, International Association of Fire and Rescue Statistics. Um, just Google wildfire statistics. There's all kinds of information here, um, all kinds of charts on different countries, uh, populations affected, number of fires 2011 to 2015 in all these different countries, average per year, average per capita, fire in injuries, fire services statistics, and then it's also in uh, bar chart form so that you can easily compare the number of fires in different places um, and uh, this is updated this is the latest i could find it goes up to 2015. okay it also does it in different cities as well okay um, so that's a very good resource wildfire today is a blog about uh you know topical things on fires have fires gotten why have fires gotten larger in recent decades um, statistics, how does climate change affected the wildfires and things like that. This is a recent article, hot off the press, October 2nd, 2017. Okay, stark evidence, a warmer world is sparking more and bigger wildfires. Okay, uh, 140 wildfires left to light life in a single hot dry day in BC. It was just crazy. Read this article. Um, you know, the record 3 million acres of fire in burning in BC, nearly 10 times the average in BC uh, over the last decades. The fires are getting bigger and hotter. Aerial attacks become useless. It's like spitting on a campfire. Okay, forest fires are natural, but the number and extent of the fires today is not natural. Okay, globally, the length of the fire seasons increased by an almost 20% between 78 and 2013. Okay, um, the wildfire season has grown from five months in the 70s to seven months today in the western U.S., for example. Um, okay, fires in B.C., 1.5 to 6 times more likely. The total area burn per year is going up. And, okay, so, so there, there's lots of things going on. Um, you know, if fires are suppressed too much, then the vegetation builds up. So when the fire does occur, it will happen. If, but we have higher temperatures in the air, then we have a greater probability of a fire starting, fire spreading, and fire intensifying. That's basic physics. Okay, so, uh, you know, there's attribution studies. Can, would this fire have happened, you know, with climate change? In Canada, one study said you need about 15% more rain to offset the increased fire risk from a one degree Celsius rise in heat. But, you know, we only have a, like a 10% increase in rain with one degree of warming, so it doesn't compensate. Okay, so um, Greenland, there were fires, okay? All kinds of stuff here on how it's related to climate change. If you Google climate change drivers of wildfires, you can get all kinds of information, all kinds of different studies on how climate change is increasing forest fires around the world. Okay, how it's fueling these fires. And there's a movie coming out very soon on the Granite Mountain Hotshots, all about fighting forest fires and the dangers from that. Thank you.